such a defeatist, Arthur. You can do it. Oh, hello, gardening chums. Just chatting to Arthur here, having a bit of trouble with his stem. The old growers droop, if you ask me. Well, Reg Greenfingers Prescott here in our gardening centre. We've got everything you need to satisfy your dibber. And this week, that's what I'm on about. What am I on about, Kevin? About two minutes. Oh, three shy. <laughs> well, let's get down to basics then, as the horticulturalists said to the pansy. <laughs> what we need, first of all, in our garden is a fork. And here we have one. Any word from the warden? <laughs> Little joke out there. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and secondly, we need a spade. Good old Cecil spade here. <laughs> And, uh, where have you gone? Oh, there you are. And a rake. Better be careful with this one. Remember what happened last time when I stood on Ronnie Rake? Oh, wallop and bang went the weekend. And a hoe. Now, where's that hoe? Oh! <laughs> now, of course, what you really need in the garden most of all is a nice, sharp pair of shears, which I've been sharpening myself personally all morning. <laughs> seem to have a bit of a non secateur moment here. <laughs> bit of wordplay there. Never mind. Onward, onward, as the snail said to the tortoise. Which reminds me, there was this little snail making its way across the lawn one morning. The sun was shining and the birdies were twittering and he was feeling so happy that he started to sing. Shine, son, d'amour. And the lawnmower went, a -da 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 -da. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before. Well, get a good grip on your tools, and you're ready for everything. Of course, we mustn't forget our old friend here, Dickie Dibber. And here he is. Now, Dickie's job is making holes for seedlings, like this. <laughs> Seems to be all for this week. Cheerio. <laughs> 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 History beavers. Reg, let's look up your ancestors' press box here. Well, this, as you all know, is our old chum, Gary Guillotine, star of the French Revolution, the old splitting headache specialist. <laughs> Very simple principle, actually. Billy Blade is secured at the top by a rope. Remove same and. <laughs> Boiler! Tres effective, eh? <laughs> What actually used to happen all those years ago is the relevant noble aristocratic personage would be laid out on said plank here, and then they had a little brief moment of jerks to <laughs> reflect upon their naughty doings, and then whammo! Actually, this is a rather good example of the guillotine. Very sturdy stuff it's made of, actually. Oak or pine, I believe. Very sturdy indeed. <laughs> uh, Kevin, uh, can we take that again? <laughs> oh, hello, Flora fans. Reg Petunia Prescott here. And a particular hello to Flora from Basingstoke, who writes to me every week. You must stop it, dear. Anyway, what you suggest is physically impossible and could crush my lobelias. <laughs> anyway, chums, this week we're looking at some of the more unusual and exotic Johnnies that you can tickle into life in Mrs. Greenhouse. Well, this, for instance, is our old sparring partner, Tendrilata Floribundurials. Wait a minute. I spy with my little eye, Gordon Greenfly. There are several things, of course, you can do to show him the red card. Our old mucker, insecticide, of course. You've probably heard <laughs> that old wives' tale about insecticide being an aphrodisiac. <laughs> Rubbish. 
Absolute compost. <laughs> Want to come back to my place? <laughs> oh, sorry. As I was saying, there are several ways of dealing with Mr. Greenfly, but the most effective I have found after years of experience is to <laughs> drown him. Excuse me. <laughs> compost city for you. By the way, this is my compost heap. Mrs. Nature's disposal unit. <laughs> oh, so that's where my sandwiches got to. <laughs> oh, no. Cheese and pickle again. I complain, but I make them myself. The good lady, Mrs. P, is away on her day job. She's a forklift trucker. So I say, in that after two halves of lager. <laughs> Well, strolling further down the leafy lane of exotic hearth, we find our old friend, Colin Cactus. Did you know these are 132% water? That's why they're virtually harmless. Oh, all right, all right. One or two of you may have had the odd prick now and then. What happens to you? And as I was saying, these are known as succulents. And by golly, they live up to their name. <sighs> Mmm! Squammy! Mm. Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh! Cut! Got 105, take 9. And action! And now, the piece of resistance. Numero uno in my book, the Venus flytrap. Now, you've probably heard that because these plants can't move, they're actually intelligent. Well, that's a lot of nonsense for a start. I sat in front of the telly with this one last night and it didn't get a single correct answer in Mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, it was 3, 2, 1. <laughs> oh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, that the Venus flytrap is so called because it was the plant offered to Venus by the ancient rope Romans, which I think is very interesting. Cut! <laughs> Chums, Reg, who dares wins Prescott here once again. And I know you're all saying, what's old Reg got in his tucker bag for us this time? Well, chums, oh, sorry, chums, I'll make you sound like dog food. <laughs> sorry, pals. This time, I'm in pet mood, heavy pet mood, actually, because I'm talking about piranhas. Yes, those little devils who've got an appetite like Roy Hattersley. <laughs> Let's go over to the tank. <laughs> well, here we are, Piranha City. Just look at those little rascals weaving about like scaly traffic wardens. But you know, they're much maligned. They, they only really attack if you aggravate them, actually. And old Reg here, the Jacques Costukes of the DIY set, has made it his business to make friends with them. Hello, my little piranha chum. <laughs> Guess what I've got for you today? I've got full-bodied rhesus munch. <laughs> they love it. But Reg, I hear you cry. Hold on a minute. Half a mo. If they're so friendly, why don't you go in the tank with them? <laughs> Fair enough. No sooner the word than the deed. <laughs> That's the sort of guy I am. <laughs> Obviously, while I'm in the tank, I won't be able to talk to you. So, I've pre-recorded, as we say in Telliland, my commentary on my little Sony mini CD and tease made. <laughs> here we go. Well, here we go. Down into the tank to mingle with my hungry buddies. Watch them flock around old Reg for their ding-dings. <laughs> Oh, next week, oh, oh. 
Alan! Next week, it's a knockout with Prince Edward and a team of sharks. Ah! Cheerio! Um! Oh, hello, DIY bat. Um, Reg, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Prescott here. <laughs> so let's get off the back burner and get down to business. <laughs> um, well, I was going to get to eggs later, but let's get cracking. <laughs> oh, cracking. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight we're going to make a meal for the solitary bachelor or spinster or whatever your bag is. As my old chum Delia Smith says, one is fun, but her private life is her own affair. <laughs> so what better than a real old-fashioned fry-up? Eggs, sausages, don't know about you, but I haven't had a banger since Bonfire Night. <laughs> so, Sydney sausage, come on down. <laughs> Little devils, aren't they? <laughs> Back to the bangers. <sighs> well, there you are. <laughs> bangers and mash. <laughs> oh, silly me. Oh, here's a pack that's already been opened. <laughs> and you lot got to split you up now. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the kitchen. <laughs> right, we've got some sausage division here. Right, four lovely porkers here. And with Eric's help, we're going to divide them up. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Five. <laughs> right, now into the pan with these sausages. <laughs> I say, viewers, what about a pancake with our fryer? Gets my vote. Right, first of all, the egg. And then we have flour. Don't forget the flour. <laughs> Here we are with the flour. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Mickey Milk. Uh, hmm, never quite managed these things. It's all this goes everywhere. <laughs> right. Huh. Here we go with the jolly old blender. <laughs> Always remember to put the top on the blender before you switch it. <laughs> and here's another little tip. <laughs> and handy later. <laughs> handy, get it? <laughs> That's enough of satire. Onward, ever onward. Right. What are we going to have for afters, I hear you cry? Well, I feel like a little pear myself. Well, that's none of your business. <laughs> and now over here, we have my favourite cookbook. It's really, truly wondrous. I picked it up at my local garage. It's the Toyota Old English Cookbook. And it's a little belter. Squid Surprise. Sushi Quattro. Oh, that's for four. Oh, here it is. Our old chum, Plums or Vin. Scrummy, scrummy. Right, what you do is you peel the fruit. I did these before we started. Right, let's see what we do next here in my fabulous book. Right. Oh. Soak in red wine for two hours. Well, I suppose they know what they're talking about. <laughs> Course dinner for one with Peter Pressure Cooker here. Hello, Reg Prescott here. Uh, Reg Prescott.